Okay. So, um, hi, I'm Michelle Sims. Uh, basically, I thought I'd share with you guys how I engage students in math through storytelling, pop culture, and student personal interest. So this began about eight years ago when I came across this book, Teaching Mathematics and Storytelling. I was originally motivated because I wanted to stop hearing students asking, when will I ever need this in real life? Why do I need to learn this? And I wanted to make math class fun and memorable. So we, I actually um, found a sample of this book online, ordered the whole book, it was really great, and created an MFA PD with a colleague of mine put his Twitter there as well, because uh, he's a brilliant math teacher and an all-around cool guy, some of you guys may know him, at MFA. Next. So there are three ways I use storytelling in the math classroom. I recite historical anecdotes to support whatever math we're learning. I also write problems based on identified student interests, and I also design units around pop culture here. So going into how I write problems based on identified student interests, <coughs> at the beginning of each school year, I actually survey my students to not only learn more about them as individuals, but also to mine information and data for future problems. I ask them things like, what are some of your favorite movies? What are you interested in doing as a career when you're an adult? What did you do over summer? Do you have any special opinions or special or hidden talents? Next. So, Based on some of the things I did, these are some of the problems I've come up with. So to introduce our unit on exponential functions, I noticed Mean Girls is an extremely popular movie amongst my students. <laughs> so basically created a story about Regina George spreading gossip. Uh, she tells her three friends in the plastics. They each tell three friends. And day after day, this goes on. How many people will hear the rumor on day 10? Next. Also. How I introduce logarithms to my students when we have to solve exponential equations. One of my students, Caroline, wants to move to LA and become a movie star. So if she has $1,000 in an account, earning 8% annual interest cor compounded quarterly, how long will it take her money to double so she can afford that plane ticket and have the one month's rent? Next. Well, Throughout the lesson, we build up to solving exponential equations with algorithms, and we realized that leaving money in an account and allowing it to double is not to move if Caroline was to get to LA quickly. Next. Also, in the exponential unit, as we talk about money a lot, QSIP, always wanting to know, what do I need to do to become a millionaire? And I don't want to be a millionaire when I'm old and crusty. <laughs> so, design a problem saying, how long will it take him to become a millionaire when he's 40? If he has this great fund that earns 12% annually, compounded annually, monthly, I like that. Next. Now, as I do this, students will actually start to request that I write problems. So Marquise and Alex, two rivals on the basketball court. Well, in Algebra 1, I wrote a systems of equation problem about two point, about field goals versus three pointers. This actually, the kids got a real kick out of this, and it actually fostered a great discussion about this is a tricky problem where you talk about one quantity in relationship to the other that often appears on the regions. And because there was so much student interest, they really got into the details of it and what made sense. Next. Introducing single notation. So our class fashionista wants to pick out the perfect outfit for the upcoming Valentine's Day dance. She tries on one outfit today, two outfits tomorrow, three outfits the next day. How many will she try on before February 13th when she has to make that decision? Next. Well, not to be outdone, her best friend the next day takes the, out the outfit madness to the next level. And this is where we introduce the arithmetic series formula. She once has an event 100 days from now. Can we figure it out? Well, we know how to write the sigma notation. And sure, we can add 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to 100. But can you find a shortcut? Guess what? An elementary student did. That's the motivation. <laughs> Next. So we get that. Next. And sometimes. 
times these student-based problems lead to nice opportunities to historical anecdotes where I can talk about Gauss and how he was able to find those 50 pairs and come up with this nice formula. <laughs> and yes, she actually is crazy enough to buy, try on 5,050 outlets. <laughs> Next. So I even got in on the fun during our probability unit. We have these five legendary ladies from New York City. <laughs> I teach in the South Bronx. And we want to know what's the probability of one of these legendary New York City ladies being a professional rapper from the Bronx. There's the end of it. <laughs> All right, next. So, besides that, I also design units around pop culture. And again, shout out to Jeff Lowenhop. Because when we taught Algebra 1 together five years ago, we created a unit around Angry Birds to teach quadratics. Now, we didn't do this every day, but every four or five days or so, we would keep coming back to this narrative. So we introduced the unit by having our students investigate how the A, B, and C values in a quadratic function affects the flight path of our birds in their quest to kill the pigs. GeoGebra actually has many great pre-designed activities for this. Next. So for ease of understanding, we positioned our pigs on the x-axis so our students would notice that the roots of the function were the key factor in determining where our birds should land to kill the pigs. This provided a nice transition into explaining how they would solve these new functions that would have two solutions using a new skill, factory. We started off factoring out the GCF first to ease the students into the process. Next. Once students mastered solving quadratics by factoring out the GCF, we moved on to some more complex problems where students would have to factor our quadratic functions into two binomials, where our y-intercept was not zero. Next. Of course. This was a bit challenging for the students, but we got through it. Next. After a few days of going through the various types of factoring, GCF, difference of perfect squares, factoring completely, we revisit our pig and bird quarrel. Next. Now that the birds can exact their flight paths and kill the birds at any energy group, we have the pigs introduce a defense against the birds. They build a wall. Because as Mother Goose has taught us, Pigs have had much success in the past with brick structures. <laughs> Next. So now we introduce bird text form to the students and have them ponder about how this form might help the birds deal with the pig's new defense system. Next. Here students have the opportunity to notice that if we convert our standard form function into vertex form, we can easily change the height of our flight path to clear the wall so the birds will not have to enter themselves. This can be easily done no matter how many bricks those pigs have to build their stupid wall. <laughs> Next. So, of course, this is a war. And the enemy always adapts. So our pigs stop building walls and develop laser weapons to shoot those mother flattened birds out of the sky <laughs> before they can hit their targets. Next. So, now we introduce the topic of quadratic linear systems and frame the intersection points of the two functions as opportunities for the pigs to kill the birds mid-flight before they can hit their target. Next. This also fosters a nice discussion of the number of opportunities we have to hit a bird over the course of its flight. We two times, maybe once, or maybe we miss. Next. So now that the pigs can kill the birds before they hit their target, no matter how high the birds fly, with their new found knowledge of solving quadratic linear functions, the birds have come up with a new strategy of their own. Next. The power of absolute value. The birds discover a new type of flight path modeled by absolute value functions. Next. So over the course of the next few days, the birds perfect the rules of this new flight path, learning how they can make their um, flight less predictable. Knowledge of leading coefficient of the function affects how same way as quadratic functions, which is why I teach absolute value with quadratic functions. Next. So, all right, they has got to adapt. This is war, it's their move. Next. So, don't forget, kids are smart, okay? They decided to do a notice and wonder for it all <laughs> with the bird's tactics and came up with a new strategy. Hey guys, stay between the integers because these stupid birds can't get us here. Why would this be a problem for our birds? Well, so far all the birds' flight paths have landed at integer points on the x-axis. If the pigs hide out between the integer points, the birds should miss them upon landing. 
The birds will now need to learn how to solve quadratics that don't have integer solutions. So here we introduce completing the square and using quadratic formula. Next. So, by the way, this is taught over a period of like six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, quadratics units culminate with an angry bird's war activity. So, basically, we recap everything we've done. Next. And we use the different forms of the quadratic functions to our advantage to determine the best path to kill the pigs. Next. We recap what our defenses are. Next. And the students then work through a level packet of problems. Well, they'll determine such things as where to build a wall to protect the pigs, given a bird's flight path. Next. Or determine which flight path will allow the bird to clear the wall and successfully hit the pig. Next. Find which lasers will successfully defend the pigs from a bird attack. Next. And determine which flight paths will hit the pigs and which lasers we should use to defend those flight paths. Next. So, if you want to introduce this in your class, here's some advice. Best way to learn storytelling is to simply tell stories. Tell stories in your own words. Feel your audience. Involve them. Collect stories over the year. Rome was not built in a day. Trust me, this unit has been adjusted several times. <laughs> and finally, don't forget the math. Thank you. That is inspiring. Thank you. Um, next up is the Orange Team.